This next series of videos is going to cover topic three in the Edexcel additional chemistry course. Uh, the topic is called covalent bonding and separation techniques. This first video is going to cover um, first off what covalent bonding is and then look at a couple of examples of simple covalent molecules and specifically focusing on dot and cross diagrams. So before we start, we need to um, be able to explain what a covalent bond actually is. We said that in ionic um, compounds, a metal atom is going to transfer one or more electrons to a non-metal atom to form two oppositely charged ions. In covalent bonding, think about um, the start of this word co. If you cooperate with someone, you are sharing ideas or sharing uh, something with them. Covalent bonding involves the sharing of pairs of electrons. So our definition of, cova of a covalent bond is going to be one or more pairs of electrons shared between two atoms. Okay, so explain what's meant by the term covalent bond. Um, a covalent bond um, is a pair or pairs of electrons shared between atoms. And the first example we are going to look at is H2O or water. So when we start drawing these dot and cross, cross diagrams, it helps me personally to draw out the atoms we are working with first. So in H2O, we have got a hydrogen atom. Or in fact, we've got two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen. So firstly, I'm just going to draw out the atoms we start with. I'm just going to draw a hydrogen atom, which has got one electron. Okay, so one electron in its outer shell. Nice and straightforward. Just going to use an H to show it's a hydrogen atom. And I'm going to represent that electron this time with a dot rather than a cross. And we'll see why in a minute. Okay. Uh, with oxygen, oxygen has got eight electrons in total. When you are drawing out dot and cross diagrams, you are told in the exam generally to just draw the outer shells, and that's fine. Okay, you never have to draw the full electron structure. So oxygen, even though it's got eight electrons in total, it's got two in its first shell and six in its second. It's in group six. So I'm just going to show oxygen as having six electrons in its outer shell, like so. Okay, so remember that is just the outer shell of oxygen. Now, in a covalent bond, these atoms are going to share um, pairs of electrons between them. In this example, I'm going to have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So I'm going to show you how I would draw the dot and cross diagram. I would start off by drawing my oxygen atom in the middle, like so. Okay, I am then going to draw my two hydrogens overlapping with my oxygen. Think of it a bit like a Venn diagram. Oops, that's a different colour. Why have I done that? Think of it a bit like a Venn diagram. I'm going to draw one hydrogen atom there. I'm going to draw the other hydrogen atom here. Okay. I haven't put the electrons in yet, but I'm just going to label that as H for hydrogen. That has H for hydrogen. That has an O for oxygen. Okay. Whenever I do these and I've got hi a hydrogen, I always put my um, electron from hydrogen shared in the shared area here. So I'm going to put this dot Okay, from my hydrogen atoms in that shared area. Okay, so I've already counted for my hydrogen. Oxygen is going to share one electron with each of these hydrogen atoms. Okay, so I'm going to put one electron uh, from oxygen in each of these shared areas between um, oxygen and hydrogen. And this is my covalent bond now. So this area here is representing my shared pair of electron between these atoms. To finish this off, I just need to work out how many electrons I've got to, um, left to put on oxygen. I started off with one, two, three, four, five, six. Oxygen has used one, two, therefore I've got four left to put on. One, two, three, four. Okay, to check that this is right, you need to make sure um, that when you count up the total number of electrons that each atom can see, you get up to a full shell. Okay, now oxygen from our periodic tables in group six, it wants to be able to see an extra two electrons to to have eight in its outer shell to the full shell. So let's make sure we've got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the oxygen is happy now, he's stable. Hydrogen is in the first period. His um, outer electron shell just needs two electrons. So hydrogen only wants to be able to see two. Okay, so this hydrogen here can see one, two. This hydrogen can see one, two. This is correct. Okay. The second example I'm going to look at is going to be a bit trickier. Okay, and the second example I'm going to cover 
is going to be the Bondi diagram for CF4. Okay, so again, one you could be asked in your exam. I'm going to start off by drawing my hydrogen um, atom. Hydrogen is in group four in the periodic table. It's got six electrons in total. It's got four in the outer shell. So I'm just going to draw a receive carbon and give him one, two, three, four electrons in his outer shell. Fluorine is in group seven. It's got two electrons in its first shell, seven in its outer shell. So I'm going to call it green. I'm going to draw a fluorine. with seven electrons in its outer shell. Okay, now in this um, compound, I've got CF4, I need four fluorines, okay? The carbon is going to be in the middle. So I'm going to start off by drawing my carbon at in the middle, okay? And then four fluorines surrounding it. So once again, I need to make sure that my I have an overlap between the atoms, one, two, three, four, and label these up. Okay, so now I need to add in my electrons. Carbon only has four electrons in his outer shell to start with. I'm gonna pop the carbon, carbon's electrons in first, one in each of these shared areas, one, two, three, four. Okay, fluorine, each fluorine wants to um, gain, be able to see an extra electron. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to put one electron from each fluorine atom in the shared um, shared section here, our covalent bonding section there. Okay, so that is now showing my covalent bonds. To make sure I get full marks in this question, I must finish off the electron structure for fluorine. Okay, so let's just think about this fluorine here. I've used one of its electrons to form this covalent bond, the shared pair. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six left to put in. So one, two three, four, five, six for that one, and it's going to be exactly the same for the other three fluorine atoms. Okay, so just to double check, carbon can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, that's fine. Each fluorine can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, that is fine. This question is again correct. Okay, the um, next, the last final example I'm going to look at is one that is just for higher tier only, okay? And this example is going to be carbon dioxide CO2. Okay, now the reason this is different is it's going to involve a double covalent bond. The two examples you need to know that could come from your exam, which have this, are CO2 and O2. Okay, so if you have that as a bit of a guideline, that's going to help you out. We're just going to focus on CO2 in this video. So just like before, I'm going to draw out my um, carbon atom first. Carbon has still got four electrons in its outer shell. One, two, three, four, like so. Oxygen has got six electrons in its outer shell. One, two, three, four, five, six, like so. Okay, so this time carbon is going to go in the middle, so I'm going to um, sh showing first carbon. I've only got two oxygens this time, so let's draw those oxygens overlapping like so. Okay, it doesn't really matter where you put the oxygen around the carbon. I have to put it in this way just because I know carbon dioxide is actually a linear or straight molecule, but it doesn't necessarily matter as long as you have everything in the right place and show the electrons correctly. Okay, our issue in this question is that carbon wants to gain or be able to see an extra four electrons to get up to that magic number eight in its outer shell. However, it only has two oxygen atoms where it can get those four electrons from. So what is actually going to happen is each oxygen is going to um, sh is going to share two electrons with the carbon. Okay, the carbon must share back two electrons because we always have to have them in pairs. Therefore, we get what we call a double covalent bond. Okay. So let us put carbon, carbon's electrons in first. Okay, carbon is going to share one, two electrons with this oxygen and its other two electrons, one, two with this oxygen here. Each oxygen atom is going to share two pair, um, sorry, is going to share um, two electrons with the carbon atom, one, two, from the oxygen, one, 
two there. Okay, so this is why we call it a double covalent bond because we have two pairs of electrons um, shared between these atoms. Okay, oxygen has already given away one, two of its electrons. It's going to have one, two, three, four electrons left to uh, fill in for each one. So let's just put them on. One, two, three, four. And the same for this one. One, two, three, four. If we check this answer now, both, um, all three of the atoms here should be able to um, see or we should be able to count up eight electrons in their outer shell. So let's start with the carbon. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that carbon is happy. This oxygen here. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This oxygen is fine too. This one, oxygen can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one's happy too. Okay, so for CO2 and O2, you need to watch out because we have a double covalent bond with two pairs of electrons shared between um, the atoms.